Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Dusty Ventura, and I am from the Center of Excellence for Health Disparities. I've been studying stable isotope analysis with Dr. Andy Lee Wong and Dr. Matthew Meyer. And we're using NMR to analyze isotopic signatures in food systems. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge my coworkers, Manpreet Takar and Bao Zhang, as well as the Center of Excellence for Health Disparities and the grant provided by the National Institute of Health. For as long as producers have been making food and drink products that are regionally exclusive, attempts have been made to reproduce these products in a fraudulent way. Chemical analysts have been developing techniques to scientifically prove whether a food or drink is regionally authentic or fraudulent. Current research in this area includes, as you can see up here from the pictures, honey and beeswax, vegetable sources, water in milk, oils, grapes and sugars used to make wine, meat from cattle, bottled water, and regional spirits, to name a few. Single malt scotch, <coughs> excuse me, single malt scotch is a regionally exclusive product produced entirely in Scotland, made from yeast, barley, and water. Water is the most important and sacred aspect to the taste and quality of the whiskey. Most of the over 100 distilleries in Scotland get their water from a local and natural source. The geographic nature of Scotland is divided up into six distinct whiskey producing regions. The regions of higher elevation are the Highland and Speyside regions. The regions of lower elevation are the Lowland, Campbelltown, Islay, and Island regions. And as any malt maniac will tell you, you can tell where a good whiskey is from by taste alone. NMR is a powerful tool for determining stable isotopic content, primarily because it allows for site-specific analysis of a molecule. We propose that the physical origin of food and drink can be distinguished by using NMR to trace the isotopes that fractionate in a distinct manner during the production process. Our approach to determining the biological and physical origin of single malt scotch is to use NMR to analyze four isotopic quantities of ethanol, including total relative deuterium and carbon-13 content, and the ratio of deuterium and carbon-13 between these two molecules, the methylene and the methyl site. Here's the hydrogens we're analyzing, and here's the two carbons. This is the methylene, this is the methyl. Today I'll be speaking, speaking with you about the deuterium ratio, otherwise known as the isotopic signature. Isotopic signatures can be used to establish geological origin because of distinct and predictable ways that isotopes fractionate in nature. For example, George Bowen and researchers at Purdue University have created an open source database of isoscapes, and these are examples of two isoscapes. They're measuring spatial variations in isotopic content of water. And here I have a map of Europe showing the annual predicted deuterium content of tap water and the same thing with North America. The isotopic depletion of heavy water is our first fractionation event of interest. And the way this works is heavy water condenses and precipitates out at a faster rate than its lighter isotopic counterpart meaning that as precipitation clouds travel from coastal regions to inland, deuterium drops out at a faster rate than protium. Protium is normal hydrogen. Deuterium is heavier because it has an extra neutron. It's actually almost twice as heavy. So we can use that logic to say that the deuterium content in the groundwater of coastal regions is going to be more than the, de than the deuterium content of groundwater in inland regions. Also, mountainous regions will have less deuterium in the water than even the inland and coastal regions because it experiences lighter precipitation in the form of snow. We're measuring deuterium content because the amount of deuterium that the enzyme used during fermentation of the barley is going to detect the is going to distinguish the degree of isotopic fractionation. The two steps of yeast fermentation that this occurs are the last step of glycolysis. Here you see the hydrogen being added to the methyl group of pyruvate. And then during both steps of alcohol fermentation, when pyruvic acid is converted to ethanol, two more hydrogens are added to the methylene carbon. And those are the two sites that we're using NMR to analyze. 
So the amount of fractionation is going to reflect the amount of deuterium in the water. The amount of deuterium in the water is going to reflect the geographical location of that water source. And this is our diagram of the logic that we're using. You can use the amount of deuterium in the water to make a prediction about where the distilleries will lie on this spatial trend. And as you can see, the coastal regions will have more deuterium in their water because of heavy water isotopic depletions, and the highland regions will have more deuterium in their less deuterium in their water because of lighter precipitation. The lowland and Campbelltown region should fall somewhere in the middle between the coastal and highland regions. So we took we took the measures of deuterium ratio between the methylene and methyl sites, and this is what we found. Our results were consistent with our predictions. The coastal region distilleries experienced more fractionation, which was indicated by <clears throat> a lower deuterium ratio, which means they had more deuterium in their water. The highland regions, or Speyside regions, Glenlivet, Glenfiddich, and Avalor are from the Speyside regions of higher elevation, they experienced less fractionation, which we can predict that they had less deuterium in their water. Jack Daniels from Tennessee was meant to be an outlier to show how these numbers can vary. And Jack Daniels is more inland and at a lower elevation than most of the other distilleries in Scotland. And it, all, and it, it showed that there's less deuterium in the water for the Jack Daniels whiskey. Here I have a chart, I hope you can read it, showing the percent difference of all the distilleries relative to the lowest elevation distillery, Isle of Jura, here. The bar at the top represents an event of no fractionation. So this is just to put it in perspective for you. The Jack Daniels whiskey shows extreme deviation from any of the Scottish distilleries, as you can tell. All of the space side regions, which is here, showed not only did they display regional grouping, but they also were differentiated from the other regions. And here's Balmori and Achintoshin lying in between the Speyside region and the Isle of Jura. So Balmori is here and Achintoshin is here. It's actually, Achintoshin is right on the coast. So this is why it fell within the coastal regions, <coughs> because it does lie right on the coast. So you can think of this graph as the number, the distilleries at the bottom had more deuterium in their water than the distilleries at the top. Just like, today I've only shown you the deuterium content, but just like we analyze the isotopic content of hydrogen, we can also do the same thing with carbon. Carbon is an isotopic signature of biological origin because it tells the story of where the barley grew up in a chemical language. The geoclimatological contributing factors to the isotopic signature of carbon include soil content, hours of sunlight, water source, salinity, pollution, and air source. So we'll be using these factors to make meaningful predictions about the region of origin of the barley, just like we did with the water. The Scottish whiskies can be differentiated by internal deuterium ratios alone. We propose that this research will increase our knowledge of how geochemical signatures are transferred into food systems as well as <clears throat> increase the effectiveness of food provenance determination techniques. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions about our research, you can contact Dr. Matthew Meyer at this email. If you have any questions about food origin studies, you can refer to these two websites here. And Trevor, if you have any questions about scotch, you can resolve <laughs> the Malt Maniacs at maltmaniacs.com. <laughs> any questions? <coughs> Whatsoever. I have a question. Um, well, why was it again that the coastal regions uh, tend to precipitate uh, more deuterium? Deuterated water. Because it's heavier, so it falls out faster. It's just a simple matter of it's, it's, it's a heavier isotope because it has a neutron and hydrogen doesn't have a neutron. That's, it's no more complicated than that. It's a heavier isotope, it falls out faster. So there's going to be more deuterium in that water than when the clouds travel over to the mountains. It's going to be isotopically depleted. That makes sense. So 
Yeah. Is there a particular malt liquor? Is there a particular one that's, that's preferred over others? Glenlivet is the most popular in the Speyside region. And the Speyside region is the most pop densely populated of the distilleries. So. <laughs> At the lab. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the talk.